And now, a fireside chat with author Bergeron. Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment uh, of Fireside Chats. Uh, I do these uh, Fireside Chats to answer specific questions, probably the, the common specific questions that folks come in talking to me about in my role as an elder law attorney. I, I do these, pres these um, Fireside Chats to supplement the uh, presentations that I do at senior centers um, in a number of communities. Uh, I try to structure these fireside chats as a call-in show, and I think that I hear another call coming in right now. Mr. Bergeron, it's Mary. Mary, how have you been? I'm doing okay. How about Frank? He's doing fine, thanks for asking. As you know, Frank and I love our home, but it's getting hard to keep it up. We're thinking of moving to assisted living, but we don't think we can afford it. Any advice? Mary, thanks for calling in, and uh, my regards to Frank. Um, m most people that I speak to in my practice assume that they cannot afford to move to assisted living, uh, like, except for the people who have already moved to assisted living. So, and it may be that that is the case for you. Um, but before you just dismiss the possibility of going to assisted living, if it turns out that, that you just can't manage at home anymore, you need to think about this. Now, um, only you know whether you can manage anymore at home. Um, the only thing I will tell you is, as I, as I talk to clients about regularly, um, everybody, just about everybody that I know, as a client, wants to stay home. Most people want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. I've often talked about Frank and Mary that way. Um, and your home is, in many ways, the best place you could possibly be, even as you get more frail and especially as your memory goes. Because the last thing you're going to forget is where the salt and pepper shaker is in the house, or where the bathroom is, or where your bedroom is. You're familiar with everything, so there's a lot of reason to stay home. However, if you get to the point where it just isn't safe to be at home, where the washing machine is down in the cellar and you just can't do those stairs, or no matter how well you keep up in the house, you still have those stairs in the front and you know it snows and you're going to have to shovel those stairs. And even if you have, it could get icy. So there are a lot of reasons why your home just may get to be not safe. Or it may be that that neighborhood in which your home is located you don't know anybody anymore, because you did, but they've all moved away. And so it may be that, that all you have is just your house, and so it isn't that it's such a great place to live. So for all of those reasons, you may want to consider um, assisted living. Now, when you go to visit assisted livings, you're going to hear that the cost of it being in an assisted living um, may run between three and $10,000 a month. A lot of money. And it is a lot of money. But I want you to consider a couple of things. First of all, it's a lot of money, but you have to compare that to how much you're spending, not just on your house right now, but on everything else. Because remember, when you're in an assisted living community, the meals are there, the meals are free. Chances are you're not driving around as much. At most assisted livings, you can keep your car if you want to, but they also have a bus. They have a shuttle that typically goes to the store that will bring you to your doctor's appointments. So you may decide that when you're in assisted living, the cost of having that car really just isn't justified anymore, right? And remember, there are all those other costs of being in the house. There's your insurance, there's the taxes. There, you may not have a mortgage, but I guarantee you that house is costing you a lot of money and there are no more utility bills. So, you want to be comparing apples to apples. When you're looking at the assisted living bill, figure, figure out all of the things that you're getting assisted living, then look at the other side of the ledger and figure out all the things that you're spending money on. That's first. Second, remember, if you move from your house, then you may be selling your house, which means in addition to the other savings that you have, you're going to have this kind of larger pile of money to deal with these issues. If, like many of my clients, you are, even if you're thinking possibly that you could consider assisted living, you really got cold feet about going to assisted living and not being able to come home, 
then my recommendation to you would be, in that case, don't sell your home. Don't sell your home. Keep it, move to assisted living for a while and see if that works out. Um, if you're concerned about not having enough cash when you're moving to assisted living, one possibility would be you could take a reverse mortgage on your home before you leave. Take a reverse mortgage on your home or a home equity loan, although a lot of times I just re recommend reverse mortgages, they're easier. Get, get a mortgage to make sure you've got enough cash so that you can live in the assisted living comfortably for six months, a year, whatever, knowing that if you're not happy with the assisted living, you can always go back to your home. If you are happy with the assisted living, you can now sell your home, cash out, pay off the reverse mortgage or pay off the home equity loan, and now you have this kind of larger pot of money with which to take care of the bills. Two other things about assisted livings that are perhaps, I want to say, unique to assisted livings. If you are going to assisted living because you have gotten more frail, because you really need assistance with the so-called activities of daily living, eating, bathing, dressing, toileting, transferring, um, it, it, then it may very well be that, you, that, if you're, that if you are a veteran, that the VA will pay for a piece of your move to assisted living. Um, if you're a veteran, if you ser or if your spouse is, uh, and if you or your spouse um, served uh, for a very short period, only a few months, and at least one of the days of that service was during a period of war, then it may very well be that you qualify for a benefit called the aid and attendance benefit. The aid and attendance benefit, if you can show that you need regular assistance with two of the activities of daily living uh, or otherwise need that kind of environment in order to be safe. If you can show that and if you meet those veterans criteria, then if you are the veteran, it may very well be that that benefit will pay for up to $2,000 per month of your assisted living bill. If you're the spouse of the veteran, it may very well be that that benefit will pay for up to $1,000 per month of your assisted living bill. So that's the first thing. If, if you're thinking of moving to assisted living, especially if you're moving because you already have some problems taking care of yourself, then it may very well be that that, that benefit will be available. Second, if you have some, those issues, if you have need, need assistance with the activities of daily living, right, uh, or need regular supervision, and your doctor certifies that, and your doctor will certify that, that he's recommended that you needed to move to assisted living in order to have those things taken care of, then the entire assisted living bill may be a medical deduction, may be a medical deduction, which means, especially if your, the funds that you have are tax-deferred funds, IRA, 401k funds, you may be able to use 100% of those dollars to pay for your assisted living because the income tax that you would have had to pay as a result of pulling those funds out early get balanced off by the medical deduction you have as a result of the fact that you can take this, the, your assisted living payment as a medical expense. So bottom line, if you're feeling less and less safe at home, but you're thinking that, oh, you know, you know you'd be safer in assisted living, you may be better in, in that situation, but you can't afford it. First of all, do the numbers. Talk to your accountant, talk to your elder law attorney, figure out if there is a strategy that could allow you to move to assisted living, and then decide. Don't dismiss the assisted living because it's simply too expensive. Allow yourself the benefit of being able to weigh out whether that is safer for you and will give you a better life. So thank you for listening, and uh, I look forward to talking to you on, uh, on another uh, uh, installment of Fireside Chats.